I imagine the people who regularly watch Linux creators like myself and various other people out there aren't the sort of people that are going to suffer from this problem, but when I go onto places like Reddit and even places like the Arch Linux BBS, I notice there's a lot of people who say things like, help, I ran this command that I don't understand, it broke my computer, what do I do? And I don't understand why there are so many people who like to run commands that they don't even remotely understand what they do. I don't know why you would ever feel like that was going to be a good idea. And ever since I started using Reddit more frequently, mainly just for farming video ideas, I've been seeing a lot of people doing this. Now, I don't think that Reddit is to blame for this. I think that Reddit is just really popular. So when people have some sort of problem with their Linux system, that's probably the place they're going to go to. I know that there's a lot of really smart people on there, and there's obviously going to then also be some people who are kind of less smart than that. So, I'm not saying that Reddit is the problem here, I'm just saying there's a lot of people on there. And if you're completely new to Linux, that's okay. I'm not saying that being new to Linux is a bad thing. In reality, I've only actually been using Linux for about a year, maybe a bit over a year now. What month is it? It's July? Yeah, I reckon maybe like 13 months or so. So, I myself am still really, really new to actually using Linux. Now, before I switched over, I had been doing like a lot of research on Linux, but the point still stands. I'm still very new to actually daily driving Linux. And it's really awesome there's so many people who are trying to learn Linux, but the thing is, when you see some random command on the internet, don't run it unless you know exactly what it's going to do. So for example, we have this one right here, which I'm not going to run because the video will end very, very quickly if I do that. So this right here, what this is going to do is basically a fork bomb. Now, if you don't know what a fork bomb is, a fork bomb will basically start up a bunch of random processes and will just keep forking them until basically my system runs out of memory and it crashes. And this is just a very obvious example of something you should never run on your system, but there's a bit more of a less obvious example where basically it's an echo of a hex string, which I don't actually have with me, but it's an echo of a hex string and you're piping it into another application. And basically what that application does is takes that hex string and then converts it back into basically a string of Unicode characters. And if you've seen the command I'm talking about, what you'll know is it's rm-rf and basically going to delete the root. So for something like that, you should obviously not run the command just because someone says it's going to do something. What you should do is look at the programs that are actually in the chain and try to work out what they're actually going to be doing because maybe it's doing exactly what the person says it's going to be doing and they're just trying to be a helpful person, but maybe they're just trying to troll you. And you have to keep in mind that there will be a lot of people out there who do like to mess with new users like this, or even really people who've been using Linux for a long time. Anyone can fall for this if you're just going to run random commands that you see off the internet. You have to make sure that you're going to keep yourself safe when you're actually trying to run stuff like this. So one thing I do want to say though is it is sometimes okay to run random commands you see. If and only if you can be 100% sure that command isn't going to be destructive. So for example, if it's something like, I don't know, what's a good example? Let's say, what's, what's something in the ls man page? I don't know, ls-a-b-c or something like that. So ls-a-b-c. Uh, so this right here, okay, I guess that's not a command in... Uh, in Exum. Anyway, we run this one here. So if someone posted this command online, if you know anything about LS, you'd know that there's not a single option of LS that could possibly be destructive. So for something like this, yes, perfectly fine. Or if you, I guess, trust the source that it's coming from. So if it's from some reputable Linux blog, or if it's some Linux creator that you trust, who you know isn't trying to mess with you, in situations like that, yeah, it's fine. But if it's, say, a random comment you see on Reddit. Don't run the command unless you go and actually look at what the command is actually doing. So how would you go about actually protecting yourself from this happening? So I have this command here that we're going to try to break down and try to work out what it's actually doing. So it is this command right here. Now, I'm not gonna run it just yet because I'm gonna assume that I don't know what this does right now. So let's say that I saw this command just posted on Reddit somewhere and this person said that it was going to do something helpful. 
Now, I don't know what DU does, and let's assume I don't know what sort does either, but obviously I know what that does, but let's just assume that I don't. So, what can we actually do to make sure that this command isn't going to do something super destructive? So, the first place you should obviously go is go to your man pages. So, since we obviously have DU installed, let's run man du and see if we get anything back and as you can see we do get something back and up the top here it basically says what du is so du in this case is going to estimate our file space usage okay well that doesn't sound too destructive well what do these options do then so the dash s option what this does so that's not that one there where is dash s so dash s is this one right here so summarize so what this is going to do is display only a total for each argument. So because it's a disk usage analyzer, I'm guessing that's going to be some sort of a shortened down output of what it would normally show. Okay, so what does the dash H option do? Normally dash H would do something like help, but clearly it's doing something different in this case. So dash H and that is human readable. So print sizes in a human readable format, e.g. 1K. 234M2G. So, okay, that also doesn't sound too destructive either. Well, what about sort? What does sort do? Now, obviously, you should probably be able to guess what sort does by its name, but judging by some Linux projects, you can't always be sure based on what the name is set to. So, in this case, though, sort actually does do what its name says. So, sort will sort the lines of a file. So, what does dash n do then. So dash n does a numeric sort. It will compare according to string numerical value. So this also doesn't sound destructive either. So maybe it'll be fine to actually run this. But before we do that, we have to understand the value that's being passed into du. So let's bring open the man page for that again and see if we can find that out. So the argument that it's taking in here is a file. So this right here, is representing some sort of file. Now, I know that this is a regex, but if you don't know that this right here is in the form of a regex, I would recommend going and typing this right here into your search engine and seeing what actually comes up. Or maybe typing file slash star and seeing what comes up and you'll eventually come to the point where it says this is a regex statement and a regex is basically a way to do pattern matching. So that as well isn't destructive. So let's just run this and see what it's gonna do. Now, I already know what it's gonna do. So we have to put in my root password. And basically what this is gonna do is show us the disk usage of various folders on my system. Now it took a while to run because we were basically passing in all of the folders in my root directory, which obviously is going to catch everything on my system. But as we can see, the home is 764 gigabytes, temp is 88 meg, so on and so forth. So basically all this was doing was showing us the sizes of our folders. Okay, well let's say we have a bit of a different command then. Let's say instead of this one we have pacman-s-cc. Well, in the man page for pacman, it does explain what cc does, but it's not explained in, I guess, the, I guess the, the clearest way to spot it. So let's go down to capital S, and from here let's go down to C. So that would be this option right here. So this is the clean option under dash capital S. So clearly we can see what one C will do, but what does the second C do? So this bit right here basically says what the second C will do. So if you use two of them, it will remove all the files from your package cache, but it's very easy to miss this part because it's not considered its own separate option. So how would you go about finding out this from a different source then? Well, being on Arch Linux, the obvious source we're going to go to is the Arch Linux wiki, and luckily for us, Pac-Man actually does have its own dedicated page. So let's see if we can actually find this dash CC option on here. So dash S CC, and as we can see, to remove all files from the cache, use the clean switch twice. This is the most aggressive approach and will leave nothing in the cache folder. And then it gives a bit of a warning about why you probably shouldn't be using this option too often. Now, even if you don't use Arch Linux, the Arch Wiki is still an absolutely amazing resource. Obviously, other distros have their own wikis, but from what I see, the Arch Wiki seems to be the most complete. Now, this doesn't mean that everything's on it. Like, obviously, something like apt isn't going to be on here. Maybe there is an apt page. I haven't looked for it, but the apt page is probably going to be better documented on something like the Debian or the Ubuntu wikis, or if it's something like whatever the void package manager is, XBPS, that's probably going to be better described on the void wiki. 
But if it's something general that isn't related to a specific distro, anyone can make use of the Arch Linux wiki. Now, another thing we can do is we could just try searching for the command. Now, in this case, Pac-Man is a really bad example because everything you type with Pac-Man on DuckDuckGo is just going to bring you to the Pac-Man game. So let's try something different. Pac-Man-SCC and let's put Arch on the end. Let's see if we can find anything about it. So how to search for a package on Arch Linux. Okay, we're getting closer now. And maybe there's something in here, but because we know that it's on the Arch Linux wiki, it's probably going to be easier just to take that route. So my suggestion would be start with the man page. If the man page doesn't explain it properly, go to the Arch Wiki. If the Arch Wiki doesn't explain it properly, then go to a search engine. Now, what about if the option is missing from the documentation or if the program itself just doesn't have any documentation in general? Now, there's two different ways you could approach this. One is saying never use that program at all if it has no documentation whatsoever. So even nothing like a help page or documentation on the GitHub page or the GitLab page. If there's literally no documentation and there's supposedly options that could be damaging, I would recommend avoiding that application. Now you may disagree with that and you might just go and use the application anyway, but if the application has destructive options that aren't documented properly, I would seriously recommend avoiding that application just in case it does something that you don't really have any idea about. Now I did mention help pages and that's a bit of a caveat to the man page problem. So in the case of applications that don't have a man page, a lot of them do come with a help page. And the way you usually get to that is by doing the dash H option. So in the case of LF, this will print out the help page. Now in older versions of LF, it wasn't actually packaged with the man page and the man page I think was actually part of the help page which was a little bit annoying to use, but now you can actually access the man page for it, but that's not really too important. So some applications, what they will do is just alias the name of the application dash H to the actual man page and it will just cat it out or something like that. Sometimes they have two separate pages. Sometimes they just have a help page or they have a man page. It really just depends on how well documented the application actually is and what the developers decide to actually implement. So. The help page is usually also on dash dash help. So in LF's case, they both lead to the same thing. And if it's something that also works on Windows, sometimes they will also use the dash question mark option, which I don't really see for many Linux applications, but I have seen occasionally for Windows stuff. And the other thing we have, which might be available on a GNU system, usually most applications don't do this though, is an info page. So what an info page is, is sort of like a modernized version of a man page. But the problem is that it really only exists within a GNU context. So if you're on something like BSD, you won't have these or any of the Linux distros that don't come with the GNU tools, you also won't have this. So the info page, as we'll see for something like LS, it looks very similar to a man page, but the main difference is that it actually has links in it. So if we go down a bit, as you can see, we have these links in here. So we could jump to something like which files are listed and press enter on this. And that jumps us down to that section here. So basically it's just a bigger man page with links across it that also tends to better explain stuff. But as I said, it really only exists within a GNU context. So on any other systems, the info pages aren't going to exist. And because of that, a lot of developers just don't even bother with them. And also because writing an info page is very different to writing a man page. So if you know how to write a man page, the skills don't exactly transfer. So it's just a little bit of an extra annoyance to deal with. So even though this video was really directed at new Linux users, there's still going to be a lot of people who've been using Linux for years who still fall into the traps of running commands they just see online. So hopefully this will, I guess, act as a reminder to make sure that you go and actually look at what the commands you're running are actually doing rather than just trusting everything you see online. Because as I said earlier, there are a lot of people who are going to try and mess with you. And one other thing I do want to say is it's entirely okay if you don't understand the ins and outs of every single application you're going to use. So for example, I don't understand most of the options of tar, but if I'm going to run tar, what I'm going to do first is actually look at what the options do and say, okay, is this actually doing what I think it's going to be doing or is someone trying to mess with me? And that's sort of the mindset that I'm trying to get people into. 
make sure you actually go and at least understand on a very basic level what you're actually running on your system so that you don't make a serious mistake. So I think that's pretty much everything I want to talk about today, but before I go, I want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim Craig, Nathan, Andrew, Monsters, RP.E, Road, Tony, Donald, and Zilver. If you want to support the channel, there'll be a link to my Patreon down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I'm using on this channel or anything else you want, and I'll get a small kickback for it. Also, remember to go check out my podcast, that is Tech of a T, available on Library and YouTube, and the audio version available wherever you listen to audio podcasts. Also, remember to check out this channel available on Library, BitTube, and BitChute. And remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I'm recording this directly after my video I did on Gron. And my nose is worse than it was before. So hopefully it's watchable. I tried to go back and re-record stuff when I felt like it was getting too bad. Hopefully by next Monday my nose is back to normal and it's not blocked up. And I can actually talk like a normal person because it's actually really annoying to try to keep talking like this when your nose is completely blocked. So hopefully it was still fine to watch and I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.